five array tips for grade 12 RT students. This is particularly focusing on 2D arrays as well as some 1D array stuff, but these are the tips that you are going to need for your grade 12 exams. And let's start off with array tip number one. In order to do well with question four, you need to know questions one, two, and three very well. When you look at question four, that tends to be the complicated question, the one that tends to focus on arrays. And a lot of students struggle with that question because it contains very difficult questions and because they run out of time because they don't finish the exam paper. They spend too much time on questions one, two, and three, and then they don't get enough time for question four. So in order for us to do better at question four, we need to then focus on questions one, two, and three, which are the general question, the SQL and database question, and the OOP question. These questions tend to be about 40 marks each estimated, not always, but majority of the time they're about 40 marks each, and the array question tends to be 30 marks. If you know your work well for questions one, two, and three, you can get majority of the marks for those three questions, which takes a lot of pressure off of how many of the marks you need to get for the last 30. So make sure that you know that work well. And by knowing that work well, it means you can also do those questions quicker because you have on average about 48 minutes to do questions one, two, and three, and only 36 to do question four. So if you know your work well, then you'll make sure that you won't go over 48 minutes for each of those questions. And it'll leave you with enough time to get to question four and to do it well because there are easy marks in question four that you don't want to miss out on. I've had some students that even try to get question one, two, and three done even quicker by getting question one done in 45 minutes. Question two in 43 minutes, they've accumulated extra minutes for that last question. Speaking about those easy marks, that is going to be array tip number two. And that means there are easy marks in the array question which you can get, which have got nothing to do with arrays. So make sure that you get them. For example, the inputs. If they're asking for values from edit boxes or spin edits, make sure that you do the inputs correctly. If they ask you to prompt the user for a value, make sure that you are using the input box. This is code that's not related to arrays, but there's normally marks allocated to it, which you can get. Other easy marks include the outputs. If they want you to display something in a show message or display something in a rich edit, even if that rich edit display is, is within a loop, you can still add that line of code. But make sure that you are filling in the correct text because there's normally text that goes around values. Make sure that you are converting the numbers correctly into string and flow to string F. Make sure that you are putting the values in the correct format. And that will include using hash nines, which are used for tabs, and hash 13s, which are used for new lines. Make sure that it's exactly like it is in the diagram shown in the question paper. You can also get easy marks from counting or totaling. The moment there is a count or a sum, you can use the following steps where you initialize your count variable and your sum variable before the loop even starts. And then within the loop, you're gonna do some sort of increasing of an I count or adding a value on onto your sum variable. And that normally happens inside of the loop. And then the third step is that you are going to use those variables, the I count or the I sum, either to display or use within a calculation. And this happens after the loop. So whenever you see anything about totaling or counting, make sure that you include those three steps in your code. And if you are doing a loop through the array, especially if it's a 2D array, you know that there's going to be a nested loop and you're going to loop from one to 10, for example, and from one to five, where one value is going to be your outer loop and one's going to be your inner loop. There's always going to be two loops if you've got a 2D array. And if you get confused about K and L, you could even use R col and R rho as your looping variables to make it a bit clearer for you. So let's talk more about these nested loops, which are going to be my array tip number three. And that is make sure that you get one loop working, which is your inner loop. Get it working for one case. So for example, we're going to go from one to five. This is our inner loop. Maybe you need to initialize something. Maybe you need to do some code within a begin and end. Get the first case working. If you are doing a calculation over multiple rows, get one row's values working. If you're doing a display, get one row of the display working. Once you've got that working, then you can put your outer loop around that text by putting a begin end around everything that's working for the one case and then you can look at trying to get the two loops to work together and if you can't do that last step that's probably only going to be one or two marks you'll get majority of the marks if you can just get one case working and then just put the outer loop around that one case that is working if you need more information about nested loops i've got a video just on nested loops there's a link in the video description so go check that video out
And then array tip number four is making sure that you use the correct loop limits. If you are using a loop from one to X and maybe another one from one to Y as your nested loop and you're not sure what those X and Y values must be, go look at the array declaration. There it will tell you, especially if those numbers are not the same. For example, here we've got a 10, which must obviously go to the outer loop from one to 10 and then one to five will go to the inner loop. The declaration of the array will give you exactly what values you must loop until. That's assuming they all start at one. If it doesn't, then you must obviously change it to whatever the starting value is in the array declaration. Now, if you are looping through everything, it doesn't matter which loop you do first. If you are totaling everything in the 2D array, if you are finding the biggest number in the entire array, it doesn't matter which one's the outer loop or which one's the inner loop. It does matter when you are doing, for example, row by row. If you're doing each row individually, finding the biggest value in a particular row or displaying each row individually, then it does matter because then you need to do the rows values as the outer loop. So you're going to first go from one to 10 for each row and inside that you will do each individual column. So the inner loop will go from one to five for each column and you will do that 10 times because you're doing it row by row. And if you're doing something column by column, maybe finding the totals of each column, then you need to be looping by the columns as the outer loop. So you need to swap those two loops around and go from one to five first as your outer loop because you're doing it column by column. And then you do your inner loop as you're going through the rows. And then HTML tip number five is know your basic algorithms, the algorithms that are easy to remember that can help you with, particularly with 1D arrays, but you can also apply them to your 2D arrays. So for example, your display, you need to know how to display both a 1D and a 2D array. You need to know how to sort an array. I would suggest learning the selection sort and know how to modify it for both ascending and descending order. Know how to search for a value in the array. I would suggest the linear search because that doesn't matter whether the data is sorted or not. And that's not the one that uses multiple for loops. It uses a while loop with a flag to know when to stop looking. Know that algorithm well. And then your aggregate functions, how to sum values in an array, how to find the average, how to count the values, how to find the biggest and the smallest values. Know your aggregate functions for both 1D and 2D arrays. If you go to my YouTube channel, I've got videos on all of these algorithms that can help you to understand how they work. Or if you've got my exam guide, you can go look at the page which shows you how each algorithm works with links to the videos there as well. You can download the exam guide at tinyurl.com slash guide followed by whatever the current year is, followed by RT. That will have these algorithms and so much more for you to learn in one place. If you know those algorithms well, then I would also suggest trying to learn these ones, which is the loading the values from a text file and putting them into an array. Also, how to insert a value into an array, how to remove a value from the array, and how do we apply this to parallel arrays. If you know those basic algorithms, well, it means you can get the easy marks for the array question quickly, which gives you time to think about the more difficult, challenging questions, which require more time. So to recap your array tips for your matric exam, number one, know question one, two, and three very well. If you know them well, you'll not only be able to take a bit of the pressure off the marks for question four, but you'll give yourself more time to do question four. And then easy marks. There are easy marks in question four that you need to get. Things like the inputs and the outputs, making sure that you follow the correct format, the for loops, make sure that you get all the easy marks, especially if you're running out of time. And then get one loop working. If there's a nested loop, make sure you get it working for the first case. And then you put your outer loop around that to make it do it for all other cases. And then if you are confused about the loop limits, make sure that you refer to the array declaration to tell you what the limits are going to be. Whether it's from 1 to 10 or 1 to 5, it will give you a hint on what those loop limits should be. And then make sure you know your basic array algorithms, your search, your sort, your display. By knowing them well, you can type them out quickly. You can give yourself more time. You'll get those marks easily and you are going to give yourself more time for those questions which require a bit more thinking. So I hope these tips will help you smash that last question. I know it's always a challenging question, but I believe that you can defeat it. So you can do it grade 12s. For more tips on SQL and OOP, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Long RT and Cat. Click on the playlist tab. You'll find more videos to help you there. Our YouTube channel for theory is at Mr. Long Computer Terms. So subscribe there as well. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.